Hi, it's Chester at Blue PK and Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look at how to join a date value with a text value, how to join two dates together to create a range of dates, and also how to join a date value with a time value. Let's start with looking at how to join a date value to a text value. So what we want to say here is today's date is, and then refer to this date over here. Now there's various ways you can do this. I'm going to start with a function called concat. If you can't see concat in your version of Excel, then use concatenate or work in the same way. And all we have to do here to begin with is put in our text value. So I'm going to say today's date is space. And notice I put the text value within quotation marks. Then I put a comma in and I specify the next thing I want to include in this text string, which is going to be our date over here. And if I close the bracket and press enter, it kind of works. Today's date is, but then I get this funny number. So that might be quite confusing. What's that number got to do with that date? Well, just to explain what's going on here, if I select this date, you can see at the moment the date format is applied to the date. But if I took that off, you would see that number. Now that number is the serial number for the 1st of the 10th, 2021. Behind every date, there is a serial number. Now just to explain this, if I typed in the 1st of the 1st, 1900 into a cell, that is actually the first date Excel recognizes, and that has the serial number one. So essentially this date here, which is today's date, is 44,470 days from the 31st of December, 1899. Okay, so that's all very well, but today's date is 44,470, doesn't really read very well. So I need to convert this serial number back to a date. And I can do that using the text function. So within the concat function, I'm gonna say, take our value in B3 and format it as a date. Now you can format it in lots of different ways, but we're going to format it as just a standard date, bd slash mm slash yyy. And again, notice that that date format, if I just scroll across a little bit, is also in quotation marks. Now we will need an extra bracket at the end there. That bracket there just closed the text function. But this bracket here closes the concat function. If I press enter, you can see I get today's date. Now you can play around with the format that you apply to the date. So for example, if you wanted to see the day of the week, the Friday in the date format, this is what you would do. So if I just copy what I've already got here, paste it into here, then I can use this format here. So I'm going to take those slashes out, don't need those. And I'm going to say, four D's, which will give me the day of the week, space, then a D, which will give me the number of the day of the month, space, then I'm going to have the name of the month, so I can have four M's, and space, and then three Y's, don't forget you've got two brackets at the end there, I press enter, and you see you get a long form date. Now you could also extract from a date the year, Again, I'm going to paste in the old formula and I'm going to say the year is and from the date, I'm going to extract just the year portion. So I've just left the three Y's in there. The year is 2021. Now I just want to show you an alternative method for this. We'll do it for the year example. I'm not going to use a function at all with this method. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take our text value, the year is, uh, put a space in, remember your space there. And then instead of using the concat or concatenate function, I'm actually going to use the ampersand symbol and that actually does the job of concatenation. So then I would concatenate it with the text function and extract the year portion of the date. And you can see that that works just like 
the concat example that we looked at previously. Now the last method I'm going to show you for joining text to a date doesn't require any formulas at all. It requires a bit of custom formatting. Now I'm actually going to use the today function in here to return today's date. That will keep the date up to date. And then I'm going to apply some custom formatting. Now to do that, you can right click in the cell, format cells, or what I tend to do is use the shortcut key control one. Then in this category list, by the way, you need to make sure you're on the number tab up here. But if you go down to custom here, you can see the current format for our date, day, month, and year. I'm just gonna delete that. In front of the date, I'm going to write the date is. Notice that's in quotation marks again. And then put in the syntax for the date that I want. So I'm gonna say D, 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 D. And if you look up in the sample area up here, you can see what's happening. Space D, space M, 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 space Y, Y, Y. Click on OK. And you can see that without any concatenation or formulas, I've concatenated or included text characters within the custom formatting. Okay, let's move on to the next example. So here, what I want to do is create a text string that shows a date range. So I want to say between this date and this date. So I'm going to use the concat function for this. Text one would be the word between space comma text two would use the text function pointing at the start date the format dd slash mm slash yyy text three will be space and space text four would use the text function again pointing at the end date the same format that we used for the start date. Two brackets at the end. If I press enter, you can see I get that range of dates. Okay, let's move on to our last examples. And here we are going to join date and time values. Now the simplest way to do this is just to add the date to the time. If I copy that down, you can see that works. If you wanted to apply some other formatting to these results, for example, showing these times in the 12 hour clock with AM and PM, what you would do is you'd select the cells and either right click format cells or control one. And then what you need to do, for example, if you want to change the time to 12 hour clock is at the end of the syntax in the type box, just type am slash pm. Click on OK, and you can see uh, the times have been formatted accordingly. Now, this method doesn't work if your times are duration. So in other words, if they exceed 24 hours. Now, if I were to add this date and time, you'll see that I get a different date because the duration actually takes you over a day. So it adds that extra day to the date. So how do we get around this? Well, in this example, I would use concatenation to join them together as text values. So let's use the concat function. So I'd have to use the text function within the concat function. So I take that and format it accordingly. and then I think I'll put a dash between the date and the time. And then in text three, I need to refer to the duration. So I'm gonna use the text function again, pointing at the time or the duration. And the format here would be HH colon MM in quotation marks again, two close brackets at the end. Now if I press enter, you can see that it still doesn't work. Although the date is correct, the time is incorrect. Now, the problem is with this format here, 
This is designed for a 24 hour clock. So the time can't exceed 23 hours, 59 minutes. Now to show this time value as duration, what you have to do is put square brackets around the HH part of the format. If you press enter, you can see that it now works. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that is useful. If it is, please do subscribe and I'll see you next video.